Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be starting a Sea Monkey Ocean Treasure Tank. This is the latest tank from the Sea Monkey Company and currently only appears to be available in the UK. I managed to find this one on eBay though for £22 and got it shipped to me here in New Zealand. The packaging features the same stylistic illustrations that were used in the comic books in the 1950s to market sea monkeys as humanoid type creatures that look something like this. These are some sea monkey action figures that were sold in 2001, which I'll make a video about at some point in the future. Down here in the bottom left corner, we have a slightly more accurate depiction of what our little sea monkeys will look like once they're fully grown to two centimeters. The back of the packaging has a list of what's included in the box and some instructions, but I'll go over all of this in detail once we open it up. On the bottom of the pack, it says we need three AAA batteries to power the internal light, which I've got with me right here. The tank in this kit is quite different from typical sea monkey tanks. It still holds around 400 mils of water, but it's incredibly narrow. In fact, I think it's probably the skinniest tank of this kind that I've ever seen. It's actually a great shape for viewing and taking videos of your sea monkeys though, so I'm quite excited to see how it will look in a couple of weeks once it's full of adults swimming around. It has a nice lid with some small holes in it that allows air to circulate, while also preventing too much dust falling in the tank. On the inside, the base of the tank has a light up treasure chest, which provides an internal light source that will be really nice for viewing the tank at night. The bottom of the tank also has a textured plastic substrate that has lines and grooves which will provide a really nice surface for the growth of green microalgae that the sea monkeys will also feed on once they're fully grown. I'll pop in those three batteries now so we can make sure the light up treasure chest is working. A small switch on the back allows us to turn it on and off. This kit comes with these three packets we need to start our sea monkey colony. Number one is a water purifier, the second has the instant live eggs and the third is the sea monkey growth food. There's a small feeding spoon, an accordion style pipette and some instructions in here too. Our first step though is to add water to the tank. Distilled water is definitely ideal and what I recommend using, but I know it's not always easy to find and so bottled spring water will work well too. I'd try to avoid using tap water if you can though, as it often has minerals and other additives that can be harmful to your sea monkeys. But if tap water is your only option, I'd recommend boiling it first and then letting it sit for 24 hours before putting it into your tank. Next we have to add in packet number one, which is the water purifier. The contents of this packet is primarily salt, as sea monkeys are a species of brine shrimp that live in salt water. Though as we have a look at it under the microscope, we can see that there are also some small brown dots in this packet. What you're looking at here are actually a few sneaky sea monkey eggs that have been added into this sachet. The reason they do this is to give the false impression of your sea monkeys hatching instantly when packet number two, the instant live eggs, is added into the tank 24 hours after the first. Now it's really important after pouring all of that in that all of the salts are very well dissolved in your tank. You can really use anything you want to mix it together. A spoon works well, but I'm using the provided pipette, which is a good option too. Now while the instructions say we should wait a full day before adding the second packet, it's not actually necessary, so we're going to be adding it in right away. Just like sachet number one, this also has more salt and eggs, but there's also blue dye and some small bits of food in here too. The dye is supposed to help us see our newly hatched sea monkey babies a little better, because they're really, really small after hatching. Don't worry if you don't like the look of the blue water though, it's quite common for this colour to disappear and become clear again after a week or so. Again, I'm using the pipette to help mix everything up and dissolve all of the salt crystals. It'll take a day or two now before the first sea monkeys begin hatching from their eggs, but there are a few things we can do to help them out. The first is providing a heat source, as brine shrimp thrive best around 26 degrees Celsius, which is 78 degrees in Fahrenheit. What I'll be using is an under tank heat mat, I got this off Amazon and it comes with a thermostat which allows me to adjust the temperature to whatever I want without the fear of accidentally cooking my shrimp. These heat mats are often sold to be put under tanks for reptiles or for helping the growth of seedlings, so that's often how you'll find them marketed. If you live somewhere cold and want to try growing sea monkeys yourself, getting one of these heat pads is essential. I'll add an Amazon link in my bio if you guys want to check them out. The other accessory I highly recommend is a purple grow light. I'd suggest pointing it at your tank for 16 hours a day. The reason is that while providing a light source to your sea monkeys, it also promotes the growth of green microalgae in your tank. In nature, this is the primary food source for brine shrimp and will be a great supplement for their diet. A regular lamp will also work fine, but purple grow lights do the best job for helping the microalgae to photosynthesize and replicate within the tank. These are easy to find on Amazon too, so I'll leave a link in the description. The placement of your tank is also quite important. A windowsill is a good spot, as long as it's not getting any direct sunlight, as direct sun can cause really fast temperature fluctuations in your tank that may stress the sea monkeys. If you don't have a good windowsill, just make sure you have a decent lamp pointed at the tank to provide some light. 
Now that we're all set up, we just have to wait until our first sea monkeys hatch. So I'll check back tomorrow to see how things are going. It's been 24 hours and I just noticed the first hatchlings in our tank. Under ideal conditions like this, it only takes one day. Though if their tank is a little cold, it can take up to a week before you see the first hatchlings. These first larval forms of brine shrimp are known as the Norplia stages, and the newly hatched Norpli are incredibly small, only 1-2mm to two millimeters long, and difficult to see with your eye. Even using a macro lens, it's not easy to really see them properly, so I'm going to pop one under the microscope for you. The first thing you'll notice here is that the Norplius appears an orange colour. New hatchlings don't have any functioning digestive system, and are born with an orange yolk-like substance in their gut, which will sustain them for the first few days of life. This is why our sea monkey instructions say it's not necessary to feed them for the first 5 days after hatching. The Norplia are born with a simple single red eye in the middle of their head, which allows them to see light that they'll typically swim towards. They'll swim around in a jerky motion, using two enlarged antennae, which is what they're flapping about in this video. Their simple bodies begin changing rapidly though, and they shed their exoskeleton several times as they begin to grow. We can observe these changes under the microscope. First their bodies begin to elongate and then numerous small grooves start appearing on both sides of their thorax. This is the beginning of thoracopod development, which are the primary leg-like appendages that they'll use for swimming. It's really quite incredible how quickly this happens, as they appear to double in size every few days. Here we are at day 4 now, and our baby sea monkeys are teenagers. They're swimming around much more quickly with their new legs, and two additional eyes have begun to develop on the sides of their head. At day 5, their digestive system is now fully functional too, which means they're ready to begin feeding from their environment. So today I'm super excited to feed them for the first time. This is the third packet that comes in our sea monkey kit, and it's the only food you'll ever need for your colony. On the back it says that the main ingredients are mixed salts and organic ground vegetable powder. Salt is included in the food, so that the salinity of your tank slowly increases over time as you feed them. High salinities prevent the growth of harmful bacteria in your tank, and assist in keeping things clean, so this is a nice addition. I'm unsure what the vegetable powder is though, as most brine shrimp foods are a form of dried algae. I assume this one is likely a mix of spirulina and yeast, which are both popular food choices for Artemia. When they're this small, it's not necessary to use an entire scoop of food, as anything that's uneaten will rot in the tank and spoil the water quality. I like to try and evenly distribute the food on the water surface, so no big clumps fall to the bottom. Now that they're fed, our sea monkeys will begin their rapid journey to adulthood. I'm going to keep them on their heat pad with the purple lights to give them the best chance of survival. In the next video, I'll give you guys some maintenance tips and we'll have a look at the biology of our adult sea monkeys under the microscope. Thanks for coming on this journey with me. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you on the next one.